Good morning. It's nice to see you all here. Uh, we have one announcement. <laughs> okay, the Winterfest is Saturday, December 5th. The sign up, please sign up to help hand out hot cocoa and goodie bags. Um, yeah, that should be a fun time. Also, uh, we are going to watch a video about Blanket Sunday. So sit back and enjoy. We know that many of your congregations do what you refer to as Blanket Sundays. I want you to know that as a result of that, we are able to hand out blankets to families here in Houston during the cold snaps that we've had recently. But many of those families also lost all of their linens and blankets during Harvey. Therefore, these have been so much more precious this year. Thank you to the congregations who made these blankets possible. You wouldn't believe it here in Houston, Texas, but it's been a long, cold winter, and these blankets are gonna be a big blessing to our clients today. Thank you very much. Echoes is giving out blankets. That is a very big help, very big support for families that need blankets. I'm very thankful to you bring it for the blanket for the people. It's now it's really, really cold. The people needed that. It is cold today in Houston, Texas, and we are glad to have these church wall service blankets to give out to our clients. They are really helpful to them, especially those who were affected by the Hurricane Harvey and are still trying to catch up with everything else that they have on top of their plate. Uh, so we are glad to have these blankets today. It's a huge service, and we thank Church World Service and the congregations for those blankets. Thank you so very much for participating in Blanket Sunday and making it possible for us to give these out to the clients we serve. I really thank all the churches for the help. At this time of year, we celebrate the birth of a child. We also uh, want to take today to recognize the death of some members, very important members in our lives. Um, we want to mourn with those who mourn because recognizing that this Christmas is going to be different perhaps than past. Um, so as we uh, watch the video to see those from among us, um, remembering the special times with those people and remembering to pray for their families and those who were touched so much by them.
This morning marks the first Sunday in Advent. <clears throat> and what a blessing it is that you can celebrate the arrival of the Christ child that provides hope so that those of us that mourn do not mourn without hope. That we can mourn with the expectation that we will see our brothers and sisters, our family members again not in this life, but in heaven with our Savior. It just gives a whole new meaning. We're thankful. This morning, we're focusing on hearing for Advent. So I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up and every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Share a brief poem. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And to St. Francis of Assisi. Please join me now in prayer. Dear Jesus, you entered our world on Christmas as the Prince of Peace. This Advent, as we strive to become the best version of ourselves, fill us with a deep and abiding peace. Help us share that peace with everyone we encounter, especially those who need it most. Amen. Please join me in singing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Thank you. 
Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the sunshine. We pray that as we um, drive around and see the Christmas lights or the lights in our own home, that we would remember that you are the light of the world. Uh, we thank you uh, for sending your son to be that light, and we thank you for all that you have done for us. We pray that as we remember those who have passed, that um, we would hold on to those good memories and be thankful for the time that we had with them while they were here on this earth, and rejoicing in the fact that they are with you celebrating this Christmas. Lord, we pray that we would reach out to those who, who are missing or or hurting because of different things, whether it be sickness or, or whatever, that we would um, let them know that they are, are cared about. It, it seems like it's been a long time since we've seen a lot of people. Um, please let everyone know that they're not forgotten and that they're being prayed for and that we do care and help us to, in other ways, to show them, help us take advantage of, of sending the cards and, and reaching out with phone calls or emails or, or texting or whatever to let others know that we do care. It, it gets easy sometimes as we, as we head back to work to forget about all those things, but let us not do that. Help us to be like you and be caring about all people, not in a burdensome way, but in a way of showing love and appreciation and thankfulness for those around us. We appreciate so much our church family, the ones who are here, the ones who are not. And Lord, we pray that we would show that appreciation. It's, it's nice to know that people care um, and to have that feeling of acceptance and love. Lord, we pray for those who are making decisions in, for our church and in coming times with what to do COVID-wise, new pastor-wise, everything-wise, taking care of the building, whatever. Lord, I pray a special blessing upon them um, as they search for wisdom in what paths to take and, and just knowing what your answer is. We know you're right there with the answer. We pray that... Um, we wouldn't forget that, that you're there with us in the happy times, in the medium times, in the sad times, and to make sure to reach out to take your hand to walk through whatever it is we're walking through, because you want to be there for all of it and, and participating in it with us. We love you, Lord, for all that you do for us. Again, thank you for sending your son, and as we look at this season, help us to remember that's what it is. Let, let, let nothing take away from the special gift that you have given to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand with me as we sing a little medley here. It'll be one, two, three, four songs. Um, come, let us worship and bow down, and all in focus of the special gift that we have been given. Worship me. 
be seated. Dear Heavenly Father, again, as it's time to think of our offering, we thank you for the special gift that you sent to us, which was Jesus. We thank you for the many blessings that you give us on a daily basis. We thank you for having a plan. Lord, we pray that as we would give back to you, it would be with cheerful hearts, knowing that you will do what is best with the funds that we give to you, knowing that you will do what is best with the time that we give to you, the efforts that we give to you in your name and in love. Lord, thank you so much again for your many blessings. Thank you for your gifts. Help us to give to you in love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue by singing, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You.
Good morning. Merry Christmas. Is it too early to say that already? Does it feel like Advent yet? It is. It, it's weird because normally, um, as I had been working at Kmart, our Christmas began in October. <laughs> so to, to lead up into Christmas this year didn't have the same kind of thing because I'm used to hearing Christmas music all day for months before Christmas. So, normally on Wednesday mornings, I tell our Wednesday morning Bible study crew a story about a friend of mine. And since I was, I, we didn't have Wednesday morning Bible study, I thought maybe I would tell all of you a, a story about this friend of mine. Um, and it happened around Christmas time. Uh, this elderly woman, uh, who was a friend, had been at an evening worship service and she was startled when she came home to find an intruder in her house. And she caught the man in the act of burglarizing her home, and she yelled, Stop! Acts 2.38! Which, of course, all of you know means uh, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. Now, the burglar stopped in his tracks froze there, and the woman calmly picked up the phone, called 911, and alerted the police who came, and uh, shortly thereafter, several officers uh, arrived and took the man then into custody, and as they were placing the handcuffs on the burglar, one of the officers said to him, why did you just stand there? I mean, all the lady did was mention a scripture verse. Scripture, replied the burglar. She said she had an axe and two thirty-eights. That's an old one, but thank you for laughing. <laughs> this Advent season, um, I'd like to use um, the five senses to help us gain a better perspective on Christmas, um, on the story of Jesus' birth. Our, our senses help us perceive our world. How do we perceive others? How do we perceive the story of God coming into our world, his plan for us. This morning, we're going to focus on the sense of hearing. It was wonderful to hear Christmas carols. It's wonderful to hear the beautiful music, wonderful to hear all the things that we come to enjoy on Christmas. Um, our, our burglar in, in the story of my friend, um, he was not able to hear. He did not use his sense of hearing appropriately to understand what the lady was saying. It changed the course of his life uh, that evening, certainly, and probably for the rest of his life. Now, this week, I've heard lots and lots of things. I'm sure you have, too. Uh, the election news is finally winding down. Uh, it seems like the reports on the numbers of COVID just keep going on and on and, and now getting higher and higher, breaking new records every day. But I've also heard people giving thanks. I've heard the wind in the trees as I take my daily walk around my neighborhood. What have you heard? This week. Now, I've also been accused of having selective hearing. <laughs> My husband's nodding his head for those of at home who can't see him. And I admit that may be true. But I think at times we all need to be more selective in our hearing. Be selective about the things that you hear. Now, we know that God hears, He hears everything, and He answers in his own time. Now, he may be waiting to give you time to prepare. He may be waiting to build your faith. He may be waiting so that others can see the faith that you have. Or he may be saying no. Each answer that God gives is the best for you. He knows the future. We don't. We may think we know what's going to happen, but the truth is we really don't. We do know that by accepting and believing the answers that God gives and by using that to its full potential allows us to be blessed more and more each day. Let's go to our scripture reading this morning. We're going to be reading from Luke chapter 1 and I'll be reading verses 5 through 25. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, 
There was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and he was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord and in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now Zechariah asked the angel, well, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. And the angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple for he kept making signs to them but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace from among the people. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. The first thing that I see in our scripture today is that when we hear something from God, we need to believe. The angel told Zechariah that his prayer was heard. Heaven, all of heaven heard the prayers of Zechariah and Elizabeth. God saw how they lived. They were faithful. They were obedient. Verse 6 says that they were upright and blameless. But miracles were very few and far between in those days. No prophets were there to speak for the Lord. People had become apathetic and lukewarm in their faith. Now, they knew their history, and they observed the Passover and all the holy days and the rituals of their faith, all of those things handed down over the last 1,500 years. But there was nothing new, no new word from God, nothing that told them that God still cared about them personally. The situation in the country wasn't good. The Romans were in control of everything. At least the Jewish people were allowed to stay in Jerusalem and in Judea. 500 years ago, when the Babylonians came, they were all wiped out. They had to be like hauled off to Babylonian, and they lived in Persia as slaves for, for years and years. So at least they got to stay in their own nation. But even that remembrance of being taken away as captives was fading from their memory, because we tend to forget the past. Our own celebrations of Thanksgiving are very different from what the original Thanksgiving was like. We've added our own interpretations of the story. And that was only 250 years ago. Now we have the advantage of written history with the printing press, with books, letters, and now digital communications. We should be less apt to forget our history. The time of Zachary and Elizabeth was a time, though, of very spiritual darkness. Now, I don't see outright idol worship. In my studies of this time period, I don't see that they were worshiping Baal or any of the other idols and, and gods. But the hearts of the people were not with the Lord. 
They were kind of floating in waves of uncertainty. They didn't have much hope for their future. Rome was too strong. It was just too powerful. Nobody could conquer them. The old promises that the prophets had given about Messiah, this Messiah who would someday deliver them, just hadn't come true. And many people had given up, and they were hopeless. When the angel Gabriel came, he spoke words that we all need. He said, your prayer has been heard. In a time when we may be shaking our heads at the recent election, or we listen in sadness at the news of wars and conflicts, of hunger and disease around the world, we hear about churches in decline, and we fear that that might someday happen to us. We see the empty seats, empty not just because of COVID. We have loved ones who are suffering and in pain. Oh, how we need to hear those words of Gabriel. Your prayer has been heard. Now, of course, we know that God hears our prayers. Many of you have been brought up in the church, and you've been taught since you were little. You know that God hears our prayers. And so our minds start to think, well, if God hears and he sees my pain or the pain of the others around me, why isn't he doing something about it? He is. He is doing something about it. He knew before you were born that you would have these specific needs. He knows your pain. He knows what your heart cries out for. Even if you haven't articulated it, he knows. He hears the cries of your heart. He knows. He knows how the answers to those prayers will affect us, the people we love, and the world he has created. And he answers according to his will in his time and for the purpose of his glory. Back to Zechariah. I mean, he was an old man, not like me, much, much older. <laughs> His wife was old, and they knew they would never have children, but he prayed for a child anyway. That takes courage. That takes faith. Now, he was a priest, so he would have studied, and he would have known the law. He would have known the history. He would have known about Abraham and Sarah and how they were given a son. He would have known about Hannah praying and praying for a son and God blessing her with Samuel. He could read, and he knew those stories of the Old Testament. And so as he continued to pray, he could face the impossible because he knew who God was. When you pray for the impossible today, you can do that knowing that God is able. He's bigger. God can still do miracles. And so Zechariah and Elizabeth prayed for a child. Zechariah continued to pray, but he didn't just pray. He also did the work that he was called to do. And so it was his turn. His turn came up to go to work at the temple. His, his uh, group of priests it was their turn, and he was chosen by lot. Now, I know what you're thinking. We talked about gambling a couple of weeks ago. Is this casting of a lot? Is this by chance? Is this gambling? No, it's not. Why? Because the motive of doing this is to find God's will. Choosing which of the divisions of priests to go in or which priest of that division would go in to serve the Lord by lighting the incense was not a monetary gain for anyone. It was inquiring of the Lord. So anyway, so he gets chosen. He goes into the holy place. This is not the holy of holies. Okay, That was the once a year, only by the high priest kind of thing. This was just in the holy place, that room before you get to the holy of holies. And in it, that room, there were several pieces of furniture. One of that was the altar of incense that he was to light. Now, the smell of incense... We're going to talk about smell in another week. Today we're talking about hearing. He went in and he did this. And while he's doing this and lighting the incense, Gabriel makes his appearance. Sight is another sense. And we're going to talk about that yet in another week. For now, we have this big, bright, holy, very scary angel standing there in front of Zechariah telling him that his prayer has been heard. He's going to have a son. Now, we have to give Zachary a little bit of leeway here. I kind of feel for him 
because he's in fear. No angel, no messenger, no prophet of God has been heard for 400 years. And every time an angel had appeared in the, in the scriptures before, people, their first reaction is fear. And Gabriel says, do not be afraid. Well, that's nice to be told, do not be afraid, but does it stop you from being afraid? <laughs> not usually. This angel explains the reason for this answered prayer. He said the child will be a son named John who will lead the people back to the Lord. He is to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah asks, well, how can I be sure of this? It's like he's saying, you know, I know you're an angel. I know you're a messenger from God, but I'm old. Elizabeth is old. We can't have children anymore. I really don't think this is possible. See, Zechariah was hearing, but not believing. Luke 8, 16 through 18 says, No one lights a lamp and hides it in a clay jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, they put it on a stand so that those who come in and see the light, so who can come in and see the light, for there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more, and whoever does not have, even what they think they have, will be taken from them. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples, telling them that how you listen is important. When you have some true understanding of the relationship that God wants with you, he'll give you more. But if you're just acting out a role, if you're just playing Christian, if you're just going through the motions, not believing and obeying in his word, if you're not bearing fruit, if you're not giving off the light of Christ, then you're going to lose whatever it is that you think you have. Consider carefully how you listen. The angel Gabriel, one of two angels, by the way, that are mentioned in the Bible, the other is Michael, who is the protector of God's people. Gabriel is the mighty man of God. I can picture him standing there in front of Zechariah saying, I am Gabriel. I need a guy's voice to do that. He lists his references and his qualifications. And I think that maybe he was a little miffed at Zechariah. I mean, he's saying, look, I came all the way from heaven. I'm big and shiny and powerful. Why don't you believe me? Why don't we believe? Why don't we believe? We say we believe in God. Zechariah says he is a priest of God. He has studied the Holy Scriptures. He knows all the things that God has done for his people. He serves in the temple, and yet he refuses to listen, to truly listen. You refuse to believe that God is big enough to answer your prayers. Fine, you want a miracle or a sign to prove to you that what I say is true? Fine, you're not going to be able to speak. That angel said, silence. The I kill you part didn't come into play for much later. Silence. You are not going to be able to speak. You and everyone else you know will know that what I've said is true. Why don't we believe? We say we believe in God. We are his church. We've studied the Bible. We know all the things that God has done for his people all through history. We serve in our church. We serve in our community. And yet sometimes... Unfortunately, we refuse to listen. We refuse to believe that God is big enough to answer our prayer. All heaven hears our prayers. Are we hearing the answers? Will we believe it? We don't like being told no. What if we're told yes? What then? Jesus said if we really believe, it will change the way we live. Our life will be like that lamp on the lampstand, not hidden under the bed, not hidden under the clay jar, under a bushel basket, no. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. If you are the moon, then you reflect the light of the sun. You have no choice. Your light may be dimmed by clouds for a time, but you're still shining even if others can't see it. But eventually, your light will be seen. Have you ever seen a supermoon? 
you know, a huge gargantuan thing that just fills the night sky. That's what I want to have happen here at Mount Joy Church of God. I would love to see the light of Christ shine out from here more and more, just like a supermoon. Because if we're reflecting the light of Christ, we shine, we bear fruit, our lives will change. Because you cannot remain some dim, poorly lit solar light, kind of like the cheap ones we sold at Kmart. You know, they soak in the power of the sun all day and they store it up in a battery so at night it slowly gives out that light until it eventually it dies, it's finished. Our light is powered all the time by the sun. We do not have batteries because we have no power of our own. It is the sun that continually shines in our life that we reflect. It's an all-out reflection. Nothing is stored for another time. It's now or never. If we believe, if we were able to listen, then we have to shine. If we're not shining, then either we've not really heard or we're refusing to obey. Do you remember the story of Jesus and the man who was possessed by the legion of demons? This is in Luke 8. You can turn with me. I don't have the slides for it, but I'm going to read uh, starting in verse 27 of the 8th chapter of Luke. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but lived in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell out his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under the guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, what's your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank and into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. And then all the people of the region of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. So he got in the boat and left. So my question of you about this story is, did the people of the town hear? Did they hear? Yes. They heard about what Jesus had done. They heard an accurate report. He cast out the demons. Then they saw with their eyes that the man who had been so troubled by these demons and had caused them so much trouble was now in his right mind. And so what was the reaction? Was it joy? Was it thanksgiving? Was it praising Jesus for this great thing he had done? No. They were in fear. Jesus had disrupted their lives. And after all, some of them owned those pigs that had died. And so they told Jesus, please, just leave us alone. Let us go back to normal and pretend like this never happened. This is uncomfortable for us. We like our lives very much the way they are. Thank you very much. Now, these people didn't have any great riches. They didn't have a lot of luxury by our standards. And nevertheless, the pleasures of this life choked out the word of God. And they asked him to leave. Jesus was with them. And they told him, go away. So listen carefully. These people show that it is possible to be in Jesus' presence, to hear his words, to witness a miracle, and yet walk away. They heard him. They heard him, but they didn't hear him. The same holds true today. You can be in church, you can sing worship songs, you can hear great biblical preaching, and yet walk away not hearing in your heart. 
You can see and not see. You can hear and yet not hear. So take care how you hear. Let the word of God be implanted in you. Accept it with humility. Acknowledge your sinfulness, your hardness of heart, and your tendency to be hard of hearing. Back to Zechariah. He heard. Eventually he heard. His life was changed. This angel Gabriel made sure of that. He was not able to speak until John was born. Let's jump ahead to verse 62 in our scripture. It says, Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. And he asked for a writing tablet. And to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, His name is John. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue set free. And he began to speak, praising God. All the neighbors were filled with awe. And throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all of these things. Praise the Lord. Zechariah heard, not just with his ears, but with his heart. He heard, a little bit slow at first, but then he came around. Did you see what he did then when he had the ability to speak? He praised God. He thanked God. He gave God the credit for it. His prayer had been heard. God answered him, and he gave glory to God. May we all choose to listen to listen clearly what God is trying to say to each and every one of us. May we choose to believe what God tells us. What is God telling us? He's saying, celebrate, for I have come into the world. I have come into this world as a child to be with you. God with us, Emmanuel. We obey God's voice. We do what we are called to do. This Christmas, as we hear the bells ringing, children singing, babies crying, angels proclaiming the good news, let us listen carefully to hear what God is speaking into our lives. Let us pray. God, give us grace to listen and obey your will. Open our ears that we may hear the truth of your word. Open our minds and our hearts and our spirits to accept the truth and change our lives. Use us for your glory forever. Amen. Stand with me as we close by singing, Thou didst leave thy throne. Please stand.
Heavenly Father, you prepared your servant John to be a voice calling in the wilderness, to prepare the way for the Lord. Lord, prepare our hearts for the coming of the Lord. May we hear and listen and cause our lives to be led by you in obedience so that your glory can be greater and greater. Father God, be with us this week. Protect us, guide us, lead us, encourage us. We pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.